Good morning. I grant you have the joy of sharing with you this morning. I have a friend who is a divorcee. It was through the divorce that he really found God. Reading Jesus' words on divorce and remarriage, he was determined to never marry again. Being a black and white person, he struggled and eventually was kicked out of Bible school as he refused to listen to one lecturer who had divorced and remarried, seeing this lecturer as living in sin for doing this. He has battled with and judged any Christian severely who has remarried, refusing to submit to any leadership within the Christian organization where he was who was remarried. Seeing me as a mentor, he came to me for help on this issue. What was I to say? Jesus' words on divorce and remarriage are very clear. In Mark chapter 10, we read concerning the subject. When they were in the house again, the disciples asked Jesus about this. He answered, Anyone who divorces his wife and marries another woman commits adultery against her. And if she divorces her husband and marries another man, she commits adultery. And yet, I have met a number of people who have been divorced and remarried, and when I hear their story, I can see clearly how God put them together. The story of Hosea in the Bible is one of the prophet commanded by God to marry an adulterous woman, and to love her back even after she has run after another man. So how do I put all this together and counsel my friend, who has come to me for help, and why am I even sharing this contentious issue here in this devotion? As I read my Bible, I see God as a God who is deeply involved in our lives and is deeply committed to relationship with us, rather than one who is aloof, always checking on the rule book. A real case is that of David, who committed adultery with Bathsheba and then murdered her husband, breaking multiple of the Ten Commandments. Although David was severely rebuked by Nathan the prophet, and suffered the consequences of his actions, we see David really repented of his sin, as we read in Psalm 51. We see David is still seen as one of the greatest men, with Paul saying in the New Testament, I have found David, son of Jesse, a man after my own heart. He will do everything I want him to do. As I read the New Testament, David's name is mentioned 59 times mainly Jesus being called the son of David. And yet not once is this grievous sin mentioned in the whole of the New Testament. God truly forgives. God is truly merciful. God is a God of relationship with us. So how did I answer my friend? Probably the verse that has become a cornerstone of my life is one from the Beatitudes which, where Jesus says, Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. As Philip Yancey says in one of his books quoting the scripture, it is as simple and as complicated as that. If I am pure in my heart towards God, whether I am remarried or not, whether I have a degree in theology or illiterate, I will see God. Equally, if my life is squeaky clean, having never broken any of the Ten Commandments, like the rich young ruler said to Jesus, but my heart is not pure towards God, I will not see God. Helping my friend to see that the important thing is to keep our hearts pure before God and not to try and judge other people's hearts will draw us close to God. Let God be the judge. Let us keep our hearts pure. This morning, I have touched on one contentious issue. However, there are numerous other thorny issues tearing the church apart. And often as we choose sides, we prove we are more interested in being technically correct than trying to see God's heart for us and the problems. In Revelation, God in addressing the church in Ephesus says, I know your deeds, your hard work, and your perseverance. I know that you cannot tolerate wicked people, that you have tested those who claim to be apostles but are not, and have found them false. 
You have persevered and have endured hardships for my name and have not grown weary. Yet I hold this against you. You have forsaken the love you had at first. Consider how far you have fallen. Repent and do the things you did at first. If you do not repent, I will come to you and remove your lampstand from its place. Here we see a church that was technically right, yet God was displeased as they had lost their first love for God. I found in my life and in the lives of fellow believers that when we get technical and argumentative about my viewpoint on God's word, it is often because I've lost my first love and my heart is no longer pure towards God, but rather I'm standing on and judging according to the commandments. I really love communion as done in our church. I enjoy watching people kneeling at the rail, waiting for the sacraments. Rich, poor, black, white, young, old, highly educated, illiterate, those with very moral lives, those whose lives who have been a moral failure, all at the same level, on their knees before Jesus. Before Jesus, there is no high and mighty. We all need a saviour. My hope today is that you'll hear my heart and not get caught up on whether I might have said something you do not agree with. My prayer is that today, wherever you are, whatever has happened in your life, whatever your circumstances, that you'll join me and ask, God, show me the areas of my heart that are not pure towards you. I want to see you. Let us pray. Father, my heart is all over the place. At times I feel very close to you. At other times I see my heart yearning for the trappings of this world, and you feel a million miles away from me. Today, Lord, help me to keep my heart pure. Show me the areas of my life where I need to repent. Show me where I need to make right. I want to see you. I want you to be part of my life, my whole life. Oh God, I want to see you. Amen. Have a blessed day.